In this video, I'm going to show you how I'm painting on a full sheet on a tripod. So the full sheet is mounted to a backing and I'm painting standing up. This has been great. It's been much less painful, frankly. Um, and it's also very flexible. I can paint flat and I can paint tilted because I have the ball head to allow me to rotate and things. So I'm going to have to take off this ball head to allow me to connect the contraption that I created. It's going to take the place of the ball head. Inside is a double sided screw. It's got threads on both ends. These are three eighths inch threads and it's going to connect to this crazy thing that I made. This is a boom arm that I have, uh, you normally attach a ball head on one side, but on the other side, I've also attached a second ball head. I'll, I'll show you how I did this later in the video. It connects here and spin it around. And to this gets mounted my backing. So the backing is made functionally speaking the same as it was in the first video when I showed you the square space piece with the uh, little quick release. This is exactly the same except it has two. And they mount to these two ball heads. So let's open them up all the way, make it easier to get them onto this. The ball heads have to be aligned, flat, you know, with each other so that I can get the mount attached on both sides. Then I turn the little knob and it connects on one side. And then I'm going to turn the little knob over here and it'll connect on the other side. Once I have it in place, I have a pretty flexible space in which I can paint. It's pretty neat. I can paint flat, I can paint tilted, and if I want to, I can undo this little lever underneath it. I can rotate it and clamp it as an example, like that, and then I can release this and I can actually slide it up and down. What does it allow me to do? I could paint vertically as well, so I could paint a portrait uh, orientation as well as a landscape orientation. Onto this is going to go my gator board backing. I'm going to make this centered over the middle again. And I'm going to bring it back to level. The gator board backing that I'm using, this is the full size sheet that they come in. And I put a little bit of uh, one quarter inch by three quarter inch wood around the exterior and I mounted it to it. I glued it to it with um, Gorilla Glue and I put down like big heavy books or clamps on it to keep it in place as the glue expanded and created a bond. It works great. And I have all the Velcro on it and it just boop, mounts to it. And then, and I have my, my space. So. This has worked great. I had the same process set up for my half sheets, the little wood pieces. And this is because over time the boards can warp and um, I'm helping to reinforce them. Now, this doesn't have room for a pallet. So if you've noticed in the background, I have a second tripod and this tripod is, to, is used to mount all of my equipment, my palette and my water and my brushes and everything. It's the same shelf as I used in the first video, the exact same shelf. But instead of mounting to that little arm that stuck out, it mounts to um, an alternative ball head. So it's just, you know, a separate tripod. So underneath it is the same piece like normal, the quick release, and then it just amounts to this ball head here. And that allows me a good place that I can put all of my equipment and I can keep it to the side. And this has worked great. This combo has worked great. So if you're looking to paint larger, but you'd like to paint standing up, and maybe you know, you're know you in a space where you don't have a, a studio, right? So you're painting in your house or something like that, like me, um, and you wanna be able to put stuff away. 
This is very useful for that. I'm able to paint on a tripod and paint standing, which I like, but if I need to break it down because we're gonna have guests over or something, I can do that and it all gets put away. In just a minute, I'm gonna show you how I put together the boom arm with the two ball heads. It's, it's not designed to do that. I had to do some fancy footwork to get it to function, but it's not insane or anything. It just requires a little fancy footwork. I'll show you it. And then if you wanna try it, you can give it a go as well. So this is the horizontal tripod arm that I purchased and it's intended to sit kind of on top of the tripod in place of the ball head. And it functions a lot like a ball head. If you release this lever, this little knob there, it can rotate. And if you release uh, this one here, it'll actually tilt, which can be useful. I've used this before while painting. Um, but what I really want to use it for is I want to be able to put two different ball heads onto one tripod. And on one side, I'm going to have my paper. And on the other side, I'm going to have my other platform that I built. And it's going to have my water and my palette. Now, of course, nothing's ever as simple as you want it to be. So this comes with a screw already in one end. And it's intended to be put onto a ball head. So as you can see, it actually has two different kinds of threads. So one end with this thinner thread is intended to go inside of the device itself. The other side is intended to go into the ball head. On this end, it comes with a little jobber duber that's intended to keep hold weight, right? So that your tripod doesn't fall over if you were to have used this as a boom arm, but you can remove it. And inside it's also threaded. Now, it's a 3 h inch thread and they're hard to find. I was originally trying something like this, which is a two quarter inch, uh, it's a double quarter inch thread piece. And you can have these little uh, converters that basically change it into a double three eighths inch piece. And you can use this. You can actually put it in there and you can put it into the ball head as well. And I did so. The problem is that the, it, these little threads on the quarter inch piece, they simply don't stay tight. They rotate a lot and they don't, they're not big enough to handle the torque of having that shelf on here, right? Once I put the shelf on this, it's a big lever and the shelf is tilting too much. And what ends up happening is that actually all of the elements of the ball head itself uh, are very well made and very rigid. Um, and you can see here, it has this bottom piece which actually doesn't rotate, right? This is the part that mounts to your tripod. So what was actually happening was the, the tripod was doing its job, but it's not intended, it's not built to be mounted sideways. It's really built to be uh, mounted vertically. And so what was unfortunately happening is the whole ball head itself was rotating, even though all my levers were rigid. So what we're going to do instead of using those quarter inch pieces is I bought a special piece. And this is a three eighths inch thread. It's called a mounting screw or something like that. I'll put it in the notes. It's got very fat threads, so it's going to be substantially sturdier. And what we're going to do is we're going to use thread lock and we're going to drip it onto the threads and then we're going to screw it into one end and then we're going to drip it on the other threads and we're going to screw it in there and we're going to tighten it down. After you do that, you can't use the device for 24 hours, but hypothetically, it should be substantially sturdier than it was the last time that I tried this. Now, actually using thread lock is not particularly difficult. You need to get the blue kind because the blue kind is not permanent. If you really need to separate something and you exert a heck of a lot of force, you can make them come apart. If you use the red type, it's like you got to use a blowtorch. Literally, you got to use a blowtorch. So that's what they have in their instructions on the internet. You can see also big end, small end. The big end is meant to go into the body of the horizontal boom. The smaller end, which is way bigger, by the way, than the um, quarter inch piece. Like before, I, 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 it wasn't sticking out very far, so I'm getting substantially more threads now. We're just going to drip it onto it. Thread lock works anaerobically. It's kind of neat. What it means is that when it's open like this, it doesn't do anything. And hopefully my, my fingers won't be thread locked together. <laughs> but 
but when it goes into a device and you thread it tight, it it traps the the space between the threads and it no longer has any oxygen in that space and it becomes anaerobic. And once it's anaerobic, is actually when it hardens, it creates a really strong bond. So I'm gonna be doing the same thing to the bottom and it's gonna go into this tube here. Yep, looks pretty good. We're gonna thread it into place and pray to the watercolor painting gods that this new methodology is gonna work. We'll see how it goes. Tighten it down. So in the end, this has been working really great once I got all the pieces put together. I did use the locking glue and I did have to put in a lock washer. So the lock washer is a kind of lock, it's a kind of washer where the uh, two, the, the, the washer has a cut in it and the two ends don't meet. There's kind of tension. And as you screw it down, the, the washer slowly becomes flat. Basically it helps keep it tight rather than having it become loose. Other than that little snafu, it's been great. It's been wonderful for painting large sheets. I can't uh, say it enough. If you're, if you're up for the cost and the do-it-yourselfness of this contraption, it's been the best experience for painting standing up on a full sheet that I've found so far. Anyways, other than having like, I guess a real easel, but this I can paint flat or tilted if I want. Right, kitty? Meow. So, uh, happy painting and you know, I hope your body feels good while you're painting and that some of the tips I gave for my setups will be of value to you.